right, so basically what I have here is I have two assets. I have a free video of the close up eye. Usually I just Google it, find kind of, you know, the first option. Pexels is a good B-roll website. And you know, usually I just download free assets from YouTube. That's usually the best way to go. And that is how I got this asset. So this is the wormhole asset. It's in 4K and I downloaded that from a YouTube video. I'll have that link down in the description. So shout out to the guy that made this. I made sure I can use it with his permission. But yeah, so basically the idea is you want a smooth transition through the eye into the center of this wormhole. So that's what we're gonna do here. And as you can see, I just made a simple mask and I keyframed the mask animation to uh, match it throughout the duration of this clip. It's actually a really short clip, so it didn't take me long to get this right. And then of course, when I bring up my mask tab by double tapping M on my keyboard, when I have this layer selected, um, it brings up the mask feather, which I have on about 35%. As you see, if I bring that down to zero, that is some harsh, ugly edges that do not look good. So the feather is gonna be your best friend here. Every clip is different, so do something that matches your clip, but in my case, 25 makes best. If you create a mask, this is what it's gonna look like initially, and then once you just click invert, it inverts it. And so, so far I have something that looks like this, and then this layer right here, this is still just the B-roll. I just didn't need the mask on it, that's why they're two separate layers, if that makes sense. So right here is where the mask starts. So, you know, with this 4K wormhole layer, I'll make that visible. As you can see, you know, it's kind of hard to tell where the center is. It's about right here. So, you know, you just want to line that up to kind of be right where the pupil is, right where the cornea is. You want to line that up to be in the center. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a 3D camera. So I'll just come down here, right click, go to new and click camera. And usually I just leave these how it is. I leave these settings how they are. Right now it's on 50 millimeters. Doesn't really matter what lens you use, to be honest, unless you're doing something more so on a professional level, it's like ultra super realistic and VFX. So, you know, I wouldn't worry about it for something like this. And then of course, as always, when you're gonna work with 3D cameras, what you wanna do is make sure you have motion blur turned on for everything. So I'll turn on motion blur for the eye layers and also for this bottom layer. So what I'm gonna do is I'll make this eye look how I want it to. So I'm going to duplicate that mask that I created and I'll just get rid of the invert. So I'll uncheck the invert box. I'm gonna play with the feather until I get something slightly transparent. As always, you can also play with the mask expansion down here. So, you know, I'll make it somewhat transparent, you know, somewhere around 152 for mask feather. And then what I'm gonna do is I'll pre-compose this layer. So I'll move all attributes into the new composition. This is just making it easier for me to kind of mess with it some more and add some more detail into it. Nothing fancy here. And then what I'm gonna do is come up here to this little square, click on it and click Q until I get that circle. This is a nice kind of hack to use because I just want to get rid of the pupil here. So, you know, I'll just move this around until I have it where I want it. I can make this smaller or bigger to match my clip and then I'll increase the feather a good amount and invert it. So now I have something that looks like this and this is, you know, not perfect. I'd obviously want to adjust this, but this is pretty much for the most part what we want here. So, and I don't even really have to like animate this really. So look at this. This is what we have so far right now. And I think that looks really good. And now let's just transition through here. So I'm gonna highlight these three eye layers and pre-compose them with Control Shift C. Make sure to move all attributes into the new composition and click OK. Another way you can do that is once you have them highlighted, right click, go to pre-compose and click OK. And now it's really simple. I'm gonna make this a 3D layer. So I'll just click this little 3D box and then I will set keyframes for the camera. And 3D cameras, when you have this open in After Effects, it might look a little bit intimidating, but it's actually really simple. So I'll just set all of these keyframes here. And then on the last frame here, I'm gonna set some more keyframes. So I'm gonna open up the four view. And then in this box right here, that's all we're gonna be messing with. So just ignore all these other boxes. And what we're gonna pay attention to here is the Z value. So the Z value is just this front little purple arrow. And we're going to literally just push it through the eye. It's just as simple as that. And then as well, I made a little mistake here and you can see I didn't center it up. So what you have to do is you have to center up the anchor point. However, as you can see here on the 3D space, you don't have an anchor point. It's called point of interest. So I'm just gonna move it over just like this, changing these values, make sure that it's centered just like that, boom, super easy. And then I will keep pushing the Z value just straight through the eye. And 
there we go. Now I'll just go back to one view here. And then as you can see, I have this rendered out in half quality. You don't really want to render out in full quality because that's going to take it a little bit longer for you to edit this. And as always, you want to edit as quickly as you can for your clients. Now I'm going to highlight these keyframes, easy ease them with F9 or you right click, go to keyframe assistant and click easy ease. Now you can mess with this in the graph editor. That's typically what I like to do. Or, you know, you can do this in the value graph, but typically I like working with the speed graph. That's just going to help you get more accuracy for how this effect looks. And then I can play with these keyframes, adjust them, you know. And so now to start out, we have something that looks like this. But now obviously we got to fix up the wormhole. So you're probably asking me, why didn't I just make this wormhole a 3D layer and then adjust it, you know, accordingly. But it's because typically when you're kind of transitioning into something, unless you have it positioned perfectly in a 3D space, it's going to zoom in like way too much. So uh, I'm avoiding that issue here by just doing this manually. And as well, uh, it actually works really well to just do this by hand in this particular case. So what I'm going to do is open up the transform, set some keyframes, and then, you know, as it goes through the eye, I'm just going to position it correctly and adjust the scale accordingly, make it look good. Easy ease my keyframes and mess with the graph editor to get everything to match up perfectly because it's always really important. Boy. And there we go. After a few clicks, I got something that looks not too shabby at all. And again, this is me kind of rushing it. So, you know, take your time and make this look better than what I have right here. So then once you transition through the eye, you can kind of have as much flexibility as you want when you're working with this. You know, you could transition through into to like a regular clip in like a music video or a short film or you know you could transition to a different wormhole asset where it actually goes all the way through the tunnel out and then shows your scene so you know that you can do a lot of really creative things uh and make this look cool so so now i'm just gonna pre-compose everything together with control shift c again and then right around here as the camera is sort of entering through the eye what i'm gonna do is add on chromatic aberration that's really going to help sell this effect so this is what chromatic aberration looks like when you take it off this is the normal clip and this is with it on you can adjust this as much as you want to give some distortion so what i'm going to do is i'm going to set some keyframes as it's going through the eye for distortion scale radial blur gaussian blur lens radius you know, kind of things like that, you know, increase the distortion amount a good amount. And, you know, you can make this uh, in the negative space to kind of have a more of a bulge in the eye. Or, you know, you can bring it in the positive space to kind of stretch the sides like that, as you can see. And the example that I had at the beginning in the intro, I kind of had it stretch outward. But for this situation, I think I'll have the eye kind of bulge a little bit because I think that looks cooler. I shouldn't have done that. And then I can also, you know, increase the scale a little bit. I think that looks pretty cool. And then, you know, as it goes through the eye, I'm then going to bring the distortion amount back to zero, the scale back to one, the radio blur to zero again, and then the lens radius just to whatever you want, doesn't really matter. And then I'll copy these values over on the right hand side over to on the left hand side. So now we get something that looks like this. And I mean, that looks beautiful, better. Golly, man. Holy crap, this actually looks way better, brother. And then, of course, you know, you can add a lot of effects like triggering this place, distort, distort, chroma. You need heat wave. I think heat wave is definitely a good go to here. So I'm going to add on heat wave and just, you know, increase the heat intensity. Set keyframes for blur amounts and then just bring those back down to zero on either end. That's just going to give kind of some waviness and some trippy kind of, you know, little esqueness, if you will. Oh, yeah, I know that looks absolutely beautiful. And then as well, another thing you can do that I typically do is I'll add on a tritone and just set this to whatever color I want as it's passing through. And then set a keyframe for blend with original, set it to 0% as it's passing through the eye. And then on either end of it, set it back to 100%. So as it's passing through, everything becomes red. You know, you don't have to do that now. I actually think it looks pretty bad here. It looks like garbage. And yeah, I mean, honestly, right here, that's what you want. I mean, that's 
It's pretty smooth, brother. So that's how I made this. So I'm not gonna go into detail how I made this transition right here. But if you guys do wanna know how I made this like Chrome Vortex behind you right here up on the screen, make sure to check out that tutorial that I'll have linked up on the screen. Got tons of tutorials like this, if you guys like this kind of shiz. And because I'm dropping all of this sauce for free, I'd appreciate it if you guys like, subscribe, and check out my other tutorials. And of course, make sure to support on my website. I got a bunch of really great editing assets on there. And I've got some more coming soon for you guys, so I'm really excited. If you made it to the end, appreciate you. God bless, peace out, buddy. Different VPNs, different locations yeah, yeah. This is my world, my oasis Puts it in a castle, yeah, it's gated yeah, yeah. I ain't got only blue faces